So I thought I would come on and do a couple of bows because I'm getting ready to make a football wreath and I thought I would do a couple of, um, a live here on Instagram making some bows. Here is my inspiration. So you guys, if you've been following me here on Instagram, you know, the, you sort of know the process of wreath making and I like to start with a focal piece. So let me show you the football sign. It's very thick. Isn't that fun? I know it's backwards because of the phone, but it says tailgate time. The reason I like this sign is because it's football related, fall related, but it's also, um, with it being football related, it's not a specific team, so it's not um, trademarked. <laughs> I'm not gonna get in trouble. I can keep it very generic when I list it in my Etsy shop. And that's really cool. I like it, all right? So this is my inspiration piece, all right? So let me show you the ribbon. Y'all, we're gonna be doing our bow making masterclass in about a week. And I'll go, I go into a lot of detail about how to choose the ribbon, especially if you're shopping online or in a store. But let me show you some of the ribbon we chose or I chose for this. I love this one. This one is, um, it has the sort of a vintage feel to it and it's got the beautiful uh, little footballs and some of the plays are written in the background of it. So this is really cute. Football themed, this is a two and a half inch and everything is wired. So I only use wired ribbon. So I liked this. You see how it plays off the brown and obviously football. And then also this one, which has the uh, yards, the, the football field yards on it two and a half inch. So I liked how that paired together with my sign. And then, um, so we've got two, these are two and a half inch um, or number 40, and then also a one and a half inch or number nine. So we bought, I have this one, which has the lime green and it has the dark green. So if you see, let me see if I can angle this a little bit better. I'm gonna just put it down the table. So you can see, that when we paired it with the lime green, this ribbon merges the lime green with the dark green. All right, let me fix this, there we go. Okay, so you see how that dark green here ties in with the sign, but it also, the lime green will tie into the ribbon right beside it, all right? And then the other one and a half inch or number nine that I'm using, is this football. It's a football um, themed. Isn't that just adorable? Like you could just, it looks like pigskin, doesn't it? It's really cute. All right, so these are the ribbons that I'm using to make the bow that will go in the wreath with this sign, okay? So that's where we are starting. So now you know I have what my general idea is. All right, so now what I wanna do is get my wire. I always get my wire ready because there's nothing that's worse than when you have a fistful of ribbon and then you don't have anything to tie it off and your hands are full and you have to go look for a pipe cleaner. Now you can use pipe cleaner. I know a lot of people like to use pipe cleaner. For me, pipe cleaner um, grabs a hold of the ribbon which could be a good thing, but I don't know, to me it's a little thick, um, and I like to be able to slide things around a little bit, so it's a little harder to adjust if you need to make adjustments to your size of your loops if you're using um, the pipe cleaner. So I like to use florist wire. If you can see that, it's number, it's a gauge 22. This is about 20 inches or so, 18, 18 inches of a florist wire, all right? Now I'm leaning up because I can see, so I can see your comments. Y'all tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're from and I'm gonna adjust this camera so that we can see more of my table. All right. Where's everybody watching from? All right, here is the two and a half inch. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a little tail just like this. All right, so here we're starting with about a six or eight inch tail to come out of the bottom. And I'm going to pinch it 
in my fingers, just like this. All right, so I've got it in between my two fingers right here. As I start to make my bows or the ribbon, it's going to gradually start moving towards the palm right here, okay? So I'm just gonna start right here, all right? And I'm not gonna switch hands, I'm gonna keep it all in one hand. My dominant hand is the one that I use to form the bows, or the loops. My non-dominant hand is the one that I use to hold everything, all right? So dominant hand is my right, so I write with my right, I shake you know, all the things with the right. So this is my dominant hand. I'm using it to form everything, pick up ribbon and move things around. The non-dominant hand, which is my left, is holding the ribbon. If you are left-handed and your dominant hand is left-handed, you would just reverse it, okay? So just remember, your non-dominant hand holds the ribbon. All right, so I'm gonna measure out 12 inches here on my mat. All right, and I'm gonna take it away from me to form my first loop. So when I lay it down on my mat, it measures 12 inches, but it really is a six inch loop. So if I measure from here to here, it's six inches, but from here all the way to here, it's 12 inches. All right, so we've got our first loop, and we have the good side of the ribbon facing forward, and then the back side, um, or the bad side, facing forward. We need to reverse this and make this the pretty side facing forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist this towards us. All right, so twist towards me so that I have both sides pretty facing. And now I'm going to create another loop. So I'm going to take this away from me. You can measure it again if you want, or you can just eyeball it. I'm going to pinch into my two fingers right here. So when I'm pinching, I'm also pleating to get it in. All right, so now we've got two loops that are rabbit ears, good side facing forward, and then this is the bad side. So we've got to twist away from us, just like that, to get the good side facing forward. And here's where I'm going to trim. All right, so I'm trimming that off the bolt. So we've got our first layer of loops started. I'm gonna switch and bring over my other two and a half inch ribbon. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Pinch into my two fingers, make a 12 inch or a six inch loop, pinch and pleat into my two fingers, Okay, I have sound. All right, so then we have this, this loop and this is the back side. So when you're gonna flip it towards us. So if you're creating a loop below your thumb, I always twist towards me. If I'm creating a loop above my thumb, I twist away from me. So this is how you could remember which way to twist. All right, so now we're gonna create our next loop. Again, these are all the same length. This is six inches. Pinch it into my two fingers, but you can see how the ribbon right here is starting to get closer and closer to my palm. And now because we finished the loop below our thumb and working on the next loop above our thumb, we're gonna twist away from us right here, all right? Twist away and trim. So now we've got our four loops. And I'm just, all I'm gonna do is move this this way and move this this way trying to mix up our loops a little bit. One thing I was gonna say is don't grip too tight. If you start to grip you, the, this very tightly, you won't be able to shift and move your loops around. And then also um, your thumb right here will start to cramp. So you just wanna hold it clean, uh, enough so that they don't fall out if that makes sense. So you're just holding it just enough so it doesn't fall out. All right, so we've got two more rabbit ears right on top of each other. And now I'm gonna decide which one do I want. I think I'm gonna grab this one. Or do I want this? Oh, let's grab the brown. All right, we're gonna do the same exact thing with the brown. 
etch or lay, we're gonna lay it down, measure up the 12 inches, pinch it, all right? And then this is the back side, so we're gonna twist it towards us because it's below our thumb. We're gonna measure out another loop. So you can lay it down on the mat like this, or you can eyeball it like I've been doing. Pinch and pleat into your thumb. And then because we're above our thumb, we're gonna twist away from us. Just like that, and cut. All right, so now what we wanna do is sort of move these layer of bows over. So we've got this one on top, this one over here. Everybody with me so far? Oh, thank you. All right, so you see how we, we've got this so far. And now we're gonna add another ribbon loop. Same exact thing. So you're just taking these rabbit ears and layering on top of each other. So we've got 12 inches. Pinch it. It's below our thumb, so we're gonna to twist towards us to get the pretty side. Take it away from us, pinch it, and then twist. All right, let's see, is that good? Yep, and now what we're gonna do is just shift these round. Do not twist, or do not switch your hands. You wanna make sure you're always keeping the ribbon together in one hand. And then here is where I'm going to Shift loops just a little bit to spread the love. All of our tails are behind, so we want all of our loops up on the top and our ribbon tails on the back, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna act like we're checking our watch. So here it is, just like on my hand. We're just gonna act like we're checking our watch and turn it over. And then what we're gonna do is lift up our pointer finger right there, add the wire underneath, and then rotate it around. We've got our wire, and before I um, twist it off, I make sure my loops are relatively the same. Spread it out. You could also do this after you get it on your project. All right, and then we're gonna twist. When you twist, you wanna make sure you are twisting the bow. That's what makes the wire tight around the bow loops, okay? And now I want to show you how to do it if you are bow challenged. I want to show you how to do it with a, a bow making tool that I like to use. All right, so here is our bow. And all I'm going to do is dovetail this on the ends. So we're gonna fold it in half and then cut it up towards the sky or towards the corners. Just fold it in half. I don't know, my phone keeps going black. Fold it in half, just like that, and dovetail on the corners. So you just keep doing that all the way around to all of your loops. Oh, I'm sorry, all the ribbon tails. Don't cut the loops, cut the ribbon tails. Okay. So we've got this one. How fun. You can see all the football theme. All right, let me show you how to do it on the bow machine. We're gonna do the same exact bow. This is using an easy bow maker. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. This is an easy bow maker. It already has the ruler here on the, on the machine or the bow maker for you, so you don't have to necessarily have a mat. The first bow I made, I thought for sure my fingers would fall off. <laughs> right, don't hold it so tight, so just make sure I don't hold, don't hold it so tight. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is first, remember we started with a little ribbon tail, and that's what we're gonna add first into this bow maker. So this, we've got our two, two spools right here, and um, we're just gonna put it in vertically, and then twist. Let me think for a minute, put it in, twist that way, okay. So we've got the good side of our ribbon facing forward or on top, and then this is the back side that we're gonna be making our loop. Remember we did six inch loops. So we're gonna make our six inch right here, and then twist. So we've got the good side facing on this loop, and then we've got the back side facing on this loop. So that when we pull it around to the front, Gonna make that pretty, the pretty side facing forward. All right, we're just gonna pinch, bring that one this way. All right, so we've got, this is what we look, have so far. We've got our two loops. Trim and dovetail that one. I'm gonna switch ribbon. Remember we did the, the next one we did was the two and a half inch green. <clears throat> you could add your team's colors. Yes, you can add your team colors if you want for sure. Just don't use copyright or trademarked items. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna start my tails going in this direction now. And then we're gonna twist. Let's get that out a little bit more. We're gonna make the six inch loop. All I'm doing is looking on my, my uh, bow maker, marking it at the six inches, and then I'm gonna twist. Doesn't matter which way you twist. Now I'm gonna bring this one forward, mark it, and then just pinch. And then trim this off the bolt. Okay, so we've got that here. As I'm making, I'm, sh I'm shaping the bow. Make sure to keep your fingers down right here so that it doesn't pop out. All right, which one did we do next? We did this one, I think. Then we did the brown. We're gonna do the same exact thing. A little tail, they're gonna twist, make a six inch loop. All right, and then we're gonna twist. Make another six inch loop on this side. And then twist. No, we don't need to twist because we're ending it here. We want the good side of the ribbon facing upward. Dovetail. And dovetail. See how we're layering and we're creating our loops. So let me, t let me ask you, which do you think is easier, the hand tied or the bow machine? Switching ribbon. All right, we're gonna do the same exact thing with our, la our last ribbon. Let's start it with this side. Our little tail, put it in between the two pegs and we're gonna twist. And we're gonna create a six inch loop. twist, create our next six inch loop. And then cut off the bolt. Dovetail and dovetail. So 
So we've got all of our loops added to our bow. Just like that. I'm gonna take my wire, get it ready. I'm gonna lift this up. Add the wire just like we added the added on our hand tie. And then we're going to rotate the bow. All right, so we're just gonna spread out the loops so they're evenly dispersed in their color. This one we did that was with our bow maker. This one we did, which is by hand. So they're relatively the same. And it all is for our wreath that we're gonna be using this as our focal piece for our sign.